The following program is rated podcast MALSV. It contains strong language, sexual situations, violence, and nudity. It is intended only for mature audiences. Viewer discretion advised. Hey, bikeaholics and listeners alike. The show is still going strong because of a lot of hard work and your support, of course. Thanks to all those loyal listeners and true friends of the show that have supported us or are supporting us. For less than a coffee a month, you can help support us too and put a little fuel in the law-abiding biker gas tank to make sure this show keeps moving on down the road. So, calling all law-abiding bikers, head over to our Patreon page and take action today. You can do so at lawabidingbiker.com forward slash Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N. Oh, did I mention there's benefits too? From all your friends at lawabidingbiker.com, we appreciate each and every one of you. God bless and ride safe. And, 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 And now... Straight from the Law Abiding Biker Media Studio. Out of sunny Yakima, Washington. We bring you another episode of the number one listen to motorcycle podcast. We're in your head. We're in your head. We're in your head. We're in your head. 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 Dewey. Yeah, yeah. You're in my head, Ryan. Mm-hmm. Popeye in the studio sporting his Popeye shirt. What up? Uh, uh, buddy, down from... <laughs> <laughs> and of course, that is the one, the only Chewy. You got Chewy and Popeye on the sofa. Mm-hmm. That's right. This is the podcast for the motorcycle majority. The big MM, also known as the... 99 percenters. Mm-hmm. So I got to ask you freaking bikeaholics, what are you waiting for? Mount up. Let us take you on a ride. Oh yeah, let's get right into it. Of course, Popeye is down uh, from about two hours north. First of all, I am Ryan Erlacher, your host of the Law Abiding Biker Podcast and your high tech redneck. There you go. All right, Popeye, how was the ride today, man? You came down. Now I'm just going to tell you our summer or our fall has been really, really nice. For you guys, too, up there, it's been unseasonably warm. It has. Um, but I think we got kicked right in the nuts today with that. Oh, it, windy. It, it definitely we- cold. <laughs> it was cold. I left. I was wearing, all I was wearing was my cut, my uh, my leather jacket, and then I had a t-shirt on underneath. And when I left, it was actually pretty nice up north. Uh, I left, and it was about 60. I think it probably dropped about 15 to 20 <laughs> degrees by the time I got here. <laughs> I was a little chilly by the time I got here, man. Uh, did you come over? I didn't ask you. Did you come over the pass, dude? No, I looked that way and it was black. Did you? You came around the other way? Yeah, yeah. It was black, and I was not. Uh, I was not going to go that way. I thought it was probably pouring down rain. So yeah, I rode around. Did went you the get? Long way. Did you get any rain at all? No rain at all. You so that's it? a bonus. Now that's you're riding bonus. back tonight. Some, I am because you got to work early in the morning. I do. Got to. Uh, yep. Got got to milk that overtime. Now I will say uh, we appreciate you coming down as usual. Dedication, because yeah, you got to be up early for work. I do. Chewy, what do you got? What do you you rode over, huh? But your your ride was little, about uh, fifteen minutes. Right, yeah. right. Doesn't no, have to get up windy. for anything. Doesn't have to get up for anything. <laughs> <laughs> little windy is all. A little cold. Not too bad. So you're uh just ready for the Sons of Anarchy stuff. I felt it I because am. this is a obviously, guys, we do our regular episodes every week. we we're pumping those out to you, our regular law abiding biker podcast episodes that we do every week throughout the year for you guys. This is another special episode of Sons of Anarchy episode for all you freaky deaky Sons of Anarchy fans out there. We are too. And I had to actually shut Chewy down at dinner because he was ready to <laughs> rock and roll, dude, he weren't started you? going off right away. Uh, mm-hmm. Yep, that's, that's all he got. That's what it sounded he like. He started yeah. talking and I was like, <laughs> Chewy, we can talk about the podcast. <laughs> dude, so... Yeah, oh, where'd you get man. the Popeye shirt there, Popeye? Where'd you get it? Old Navy. It was at Old Navy. I was in there shopping. And, no, 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 Sweet. no, no. It wasn't. It was uh, at J.C. Penney. That's where we were walking around, and I saw it. I'm like, I don't even know if that's gonna fit. It's kind of, it's kind of tight, <laughs> but it's cool. <laughs> but I like, I'm putting it on, man. I'm getting that. That's awesome. It's definitely cool. It fits yeah. you well. And I, I, being the trained observer, I ended up, you had to tell me you had it on because I, I got so much going on here. The old lady was just shaking her head. She's like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool all right we're gonna get into this content guys because we've got so we're gonna be covering um of course season se- seven excuse me we're gonna be covering episode five and six and in fact it's wednesday so 
episode six just aired last night. A lot of new developments. I do want to do a shout out to Greg, Gregory Gaxiola, our friend down in California. Hey, how's it going, Greg? Mm -hmm. You guys got to meet him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's a great guy. Very involved. Very involved. Now, we have a private Facebook group, and of course, you guys are all members. You probably saw that. It's the private. We have our regular Facebook group um, that's open to the public, and then we have our private Facebook group that you can only be involved in if you're a Patreon, if you're a patron over at Patreon. And uh, so we've started that little private group. We talk about a lot of stuff that we don't talk about anywhere else. Um, and uh, we throw ideas back and forth. And in fact, I recently have brand new artwork for the podcast. You guys haven't even seen it. It's new. You saw the regular, the beginning art. Did you see I that? I did. I saw With the yeah, skeleton. And the, oh, so that was just an artist that drawing. Looks pretty, yeah. That, that it looks is, good. And I like that. But that's not the final. That's not even it. I sent the artwork to a guy in Nepal who's a graphic designer. Now he's taking it from that, an artist drew it, into something that can be used digitally. Hmm. And it is wow. bad. Well, guess what? The, all those in the private Facebook group are going to get to see it. Sweet. Um, before I even finalize it, I just have Before haven't. I even get to see it. Well, you're in the group. You'll get to see it. Yeah, well, I've got to wait. Don't even get any special privileges. Maybe. <laughs> I might today. Uh-huh. Actually, let me pull it up and show you, and, and uh, I'll show you the, the rough draft of it. Pull it out there. Let me look at I'm, that bad boy. Uh, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> Come over here. <laughs> so anyways, there it is, guys. You can see it's got the developer's logos like all it. over it, and it's not. That's cool. But that's what he sent me uh, to finalize, and I'm like, yeah. Kind of looks like you a little bit, right? <laughs> it does, doesn't it? Yeah, you see those evil red eyes there. Yeah. You see this right here? <laughs> that is pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah, I wish I had a higher resolution image. I did it. That's cool. At some point, but uh, yeah, so anyways, that gives you an idea. It's going to be awesome. That'll be our new brand, our new logo, and all that kind of stuff. Cool. All right, so sweet. with that said, if you guys want to get involved in that Patreon group and uh, talk about all that kind of stuff and help each other, you can go over to lawabidingbiker.com slash Patreon. For less than a coffee a month. That's right. Mm-hmm. You too can help us out. And uh, everybody in that group right now, I've already got t-shirts made for everybody in that group. And we were just talking about it, Chewy, the t-shirts that we, uh, and well, we're, before we went on, went on air here, um, uh, I've got the t-shirt order actually in because the artwork for the t-shirts was done. Mm. And uh, everybody in that group, of course, is getting everybody that's a patron and a hardcore supporter of the show is getting a t-shirt. I have a list of that, but you guys listening, I got it. I will email you to get your addresses because I'm going to need to know where to ship those. So let's move along because we've got a ton of content. Anyways, Greg Gaxiola, he says, uh, Lurch called me out for the SOA predictions. Here it is. Hmm. Uh, Greg says, Jax runs off with Venus. Venus with a penis. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I call Venus. Venus. And he says, so Jax runs off with Venus, Chibs marries Gemma, and they form a female spinoff crew. And Unser becomes president, and they all ride off in the sunset. <laughs> Dude. That's funny. Yeah. That's Good prediction, funny. Greg. <clears throat> I like it. So do you want to hit the next one? This was, uh, I'll let you read it here, when, uh, Popeye. You can roll with it. But this is John Patton via our private Facebook group. Again, He's uh, Greg is in a private member because he's a patron. And also John Patton is, is also a private a Facebook group because he's a patron. So why don't you say what he says here? All right. So John's prediction is after a four day sexual marathon with the new town sheriff, Jax quits the club citing major philosophical differences. <laughs> Dude, yeah. I love it. Uh, Bobby tries to step in as prez, but is unexpectedly killed when his beard gets caught in a motorcycle chain while performing Jeez. maintenance on the bike. <laughs> oh the, Irish, the Irishman and the pervert are killed in a Chinese attack, leaving juice as the ranking club member taking over his prez. He then convinces all the members to commit suicide by drinking Kool-Aid. Love it. And of course, that is just a guess, he says. <laughs> Thanks, John, for sending that in via the private Facebook group there. We really appreciate it. And also, Greg. So, episode five <laughs> aired on October 7th, 2014, titled Some Strange Eruption. And then episode six of season seven aired last night, which was 10 2014, called Smoke them if you got them. I wonder why they called it that. Because everybody was smoking. I guess. Gemma was smoking. Yeah, I yeah. guess. Um, the waitress the was waitress smoking was with smoking. them. Jax yeah. was smoking when he was with mm-hmm. Marcus Alvarez. Uh, there you go. I, I don't know. I guess. They just They're always smoking. smoking anyway, though. But you're well, right. no. It could, I don't know. No. Last, you're talking about last night's episode. Correct. That's called Smoke them if you got them. 
Well, that's what I'm thinking. Everybody was just or, smoking. Later on in the show when they did a little bit of smoking with. With what? With some firearms. They did, oh. some, they did some smoking. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Smoke them if you got them. You're right. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Huh. All right. So let's roll. We got a lot to talk about and we're kind of going to combine. We're going to kind of start out here with episode five and then, but a lot of what comes up in episode five is going to roll us. I've got some awesome sound bites. Let's rock and roll. Sheriff Jerry and Chibs come out of the shower in towels, dude. She boned. Bam. I mean, he boned yeah. her, dude. I was, I was beginning <laughs> to think that she was whole. These are explicit set, Popeye, by the way. I was trying to think that before this, she was trying to set up the whole club. Right. You know? Mm, I don't know now. Well, well, maybe she is still, but yeah. I'm just saying now because somebody made the prediction last time it was Lurch. Mm-hmm. He said, "Well, she's not really dirty," and I think you were with him, which is fine. That oh, well, they gave her money, but she's taking it back and she's putting in evidence and she's trying to make uh, a RICO uh-huh. case. Well, she did mention that in one of the episodes. She's like, "I take the money," but it what it, she didn't say like for herself, right? No, she takes the money for so herself. So she's putting the money in evidence, just right. taking the cock. No, no, the no, cock. no. She she didn't say that, but I, I could have swore that she said something like she didn't use the money for herself. Uh, well, anyways. I don't think she's putting it in evidence. I'm just and okay. now she's taking the big. Now she's schlong. putting something yeah. else. She's putting something else in the Yeah, room. I was laughing as soon as I saw the way that she's looking at Chibs. I was telling the wife, Scotty. I'm like, yeah, Scotty, Scotty, I was like, Scotty, she's getting up, bending that over. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, dude. And then you, that just cracked me. You guys might have talked about it already. But, uh, they're they're in the car driving her patrol car home, <laughs> yeah. and I'm going, "Thank you." What the hell is oh, this? Shit. And it's OMG, only in yeah, Hollywood, exactly. dude. Only in Hollywood. Let me give you a ride home. Let me give you a ride. <laughs> He's driving <laughs> an outlaw motorcycle gang member driving. Oh a, man, yeah, not the hilarious. deputy's car, the sheriff's yeah, car. That's the hilarious. sheriff's car. The reach over, grabs her hand. Yeah. I'm like, oh, this is gonna go good. Yeah. Well, my prediction, I'm just <laughs> oh. saying she is not putting that money in evidence. I don't think she's building a RICO case. What say you? Anything on that? It's just hard to tell with her right now. I don't know. I. Yeah. yeah well, it's it's hard to tell at this point. She's really going she's, undercover. She's if, uh, wanting. Uh, that's yeah. the case. She's, she's really going undercover yeah, for sure. Uh, she's wanting. I mean, if that's well, the case, she's s- wanting to get as much information as she can. But one of the rules is you can't sleep with informants. Just that, is a, that is a rule, but this is TV. You're right. Remember. You're right. So, all right, let's move on. Um, so they uh, obviously did the deed. So mm-hmm. they're in uh, together. And Sheriff Jerry Unser and the others are investigating. Of course, we all know about the Diosa slaughter. And uh, mm-hmm. here, here's a good uh, sound clip. I want to play Jerry Talks with Jax. It's a nice little discussion. All right, here we go. You ready for this? Let's do it. Ready. You're the one who opens up every morning. It's usually Lila Winston. She's running our other business, so I've been helping out here. Lucky for Lila. Yeah. I know you're not going to give us any information. Outlaw code. We've got a room filled with the slaughtered bodies of innocent people. I'm aware. I've been doing this a while. This guy's a lot more dangerous than your MC. I know how to navigate around outlaw code, how to function within it, and still do my job. Patterson, the feds, my boss, shit, they're gonna be so far up my ass with this disaster. The only way this doesn't crush both of us is if you bend with me. I don't give a shit what that looks like. I don't care how the intel is delivered. But if I don't get some cooperation, this all cracks wide open. And none of us walk away whole. God, yeah, she just talks so dirty. She does. I know. Cool. It gets me excited, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> They're gonna be I, so far up her ass. I was gonna say, yeah. Scotty, already, Scotty's already there. Yeah. You've <laughs> got to bend with me. You've got to bend with me. <laughs> <laughs> she plays a good part, though. Yeah. She does it well. Yeah, she does. I was um, just laughing the way she says, in you know, in in the clip of uh, uh, outlaw code and all. Just the way she says, I know outlaw code and all. I know <laughs> how to work within it. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, because she worked uh-huh. apparently at Stockton, right? She was uh, in in a task force or something, if I remember right. Remember that? I think that's what they did say, yeah. When they were thinking about bringing her over, because Unter was talking about that she worked in some- Yeah, you're uh, correct. Yeah, yeah organized crime unit. Yep. That's what it was. All right. So she knows how to play a role. That's all I'm saying. Right. And so she's in with Jax now, obviously. Mm-hmm. I mean, to, to a certain extent, because she's asking him to twist and- It's funny, though. When you hear her talk to Jax mm-hmm. and the chips, totally, it's totally different the way she talks. You're to right. Her. She talks to Chibs like, hey, hey, with Jax, it's all pretty much straightforward. Business. You know, yeah, business. We're not, I'm a cop, you're a bad guy. We're going to talk that way. But with Chibs, it's more, hey, I can do this for you or, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? It's a little different. 
the conversation She's is. Playing it, dude, yeah. for sure. So we know Sam Crow meets at the table, of course. They all realize that uh, only a few knew about that Chinese gun takedown. Mm-hmm. All right. I guess what they're getting at is this is what we're still trying to find out, right? From last night's episode is who ratted him because yeah, right? mm-hmm. somehow I have an idea who did, but well, go ahead. I think it's Borowski. He's, a, he's acting, he's just acting weird and he, sh- and well, I won't say because we're not there yet, but in this episode here, when they contact one of mm-hmm. his employees, I just, he, there's something about that guy. I don't know. I mean, he's dirty as we know in the show, he's dirty, but there's something more behind that guy. I don't know. He's, Good call. <laughs> so basically what we're getting at is between last episode and six, five and six, somebody ratted about that they took down the Chinese. And, and only, that's why they killed all the girls in Diosa. Mm-hmm. So there's only a few that know. So Borowski's your call. I'm leaning with you. I really am. Well, yeah. Well, and if once we get later on, you, we'll talk about what. Okay. How he. You got any thoughts on this, it. Popeye? Borowski, I, I have to lean with uh, Chewy think, yeah, on this he's one. He's dirty already and he's just weird. Because he's, he's kind of been out of the radar yeah. somewhat. And then he's just, uh, he's, he's, he's definitely dirty. He'll play anybody. Anything, Popeye, on that? All right. Let's move on and uh, let's talk about where are we moving to. Oh, Gemma tells Jax that her father took a turn for the worse. Of course, we know why she wants to go over there. All right. Here's what I say on who who turned him in is, is that you've got the Indian Hills chapter president up there. And now what I'm thinking is, is that obviously one of the guys who was killed, who was set up by Jax with the dope is Indian Hills mm-hmm. president. Mm-hmm. So he called. He Which figured is jury. It, right. Yes. Jury. So he figured it all out knowing where that shotgun came from. Remember the taped up handle you're on the right. shotgun? Yeah, you're right. There's a taped up handle. Right. Mm-hmm. And then he realizes that he's been thrown under the bus by the club. Mm-hmm. So he decides he's going to freaking make some calls and basically start screwing with uh, Jax. He's with got Jax. it. Yeah, so he's he's figured, got it. he figured it out. I think he's and got it. And that's where all this yeah. stuff came, came You're right. About. And I'm glad you brought that up. I did mention that on, I think it was the last episode that we did. You're right. I, I changed my mind. <laughs> no he's yeah but I, 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 now i'm right thinking he's correct and, and yeah i don't good, know good how one. i good one popeye yeah so, Bar- yep. Baroski ain't going Baroski ain't opening his mouth for nothing i don't i don't think i think he's he's quiet because he's so dirty oh yeah well he's dirty but i mean I, in a later episode then he gives he gives the chinese to jacks which we'll talk about by later but he gives the chinese to jacks and the member of the good cops show up mm-hmm. and they have to take off mm-hmm. right uh because yeah, of you're that. right but mm-hmm. Broski didn't have anything to do with that. So obviously, Jerry, the chapter president from Indian Hills, has made some calls. Is he just, I'm just wondering, is Jerry going straight to the Chinese or is he going to somebody and they're telling the Chinese? You know what I mean? I guess we'll find out that. He could yeah. go directly to the Chinese. There you go. Well, he could Jerry's, just be giving him the information and have to say who he is. Right. You know, or why he's doing it, but just say, hey, look into this. And then all of a sudden, because remember, they also went to the warehouse right. and they found a Sons of Anarchy guy guarding. Mm-hmm. guarding at the port and of course the chinese was it the chinese or the mexicans were going hey what the hell is this guy guarding our guns for right right so. yeah good call good call mm-hmm. all right so nero and meets Borowski at the old bakery there and uh lynn and his guys of course come in and nero's there remember this scene yep. so he's deal. talking to him and then all of a sudden the chinese come in behind yep. so this is an interesting little conversation these conversations are getting so damn tedious, don't you think? I need to understand. You need to understand. You know what I need to understand, Nero? Why you've been telling me that I should trust Teller? Because the whole time you've been playing negotiator, the MC has been raping me. Teller is a liar. Him and Marx have been making some kind of move to take over my territory. I don't know who you've been talking to. Teller is the one who stole my guns, took out my guys, and hit my massage parlors. I found my guns in a port warehouse guarded by a member of Sam Crow. If that's true, then he's been lying to both of us. Yeah? Well, there's only one move to prove that. You deliver Teller to me. I'll handle the payback. There's got to be an explanation for it. Let me be more specific. You deliver Teller or I kill you. End of the day, Nero. And in case you got any ideas about taking a road trip, security at the cripple home ain't that tight. Save that rage for your biker pal. He's the one who should catch it. Love it, dude. That's an intense scene. I love it. So he's they've obviously got, we all know Nero's kid under surveillance, yep. this cripple kid. Right. And that really, he takes that to heart. Now we know because, you know, is he going to give up Jax? 
because basically you tell them I'm going to kill you or give me jacks, right? Mm-hmm. Is that what you got out of that? Yeah. So um, as we move along, we're going to find out what happens with that. So mm-hmm. Sam Crow meets uh, at the, oh yeah, we already did that. Okay. So after meeting Gemma, uh, Gemma tells Jax her father took a turn for the worse. And of course we know. God, she's so full of shit. She man. is. She is. Because what, <laughs> what does she want to yeah. go over there? <laughs> yeah. It's because she wants to be able to take uh, juice, juice, juicy yeah. boy over to her father's mm-hmm. house, right? That was the initial plan. That was the initial yeah. plan. Yeah. We're right. That went downhill. Yeah. We went way far from that plan. So yeah. this is good. Um, uh, here, here, Jerry is waiting outside. Remember this scene where she meets with Chibs? Let's, yes. Let's listen in. Yep. Hi. So that phone call this morning was about Diosa. Nothing to do with that. So someone just arbitrarily floated into Murata and murdered 16 people? Just a random act of violence? And we want to make sure it doesn't happen again. Just need you to leave the oneness. Are you serious? This isn't a parking violation or a B&E. The DA, the feds, they are all over this. I thought we had an understanding. We want more, more cash. Do you know why I take the money? Yeah, because it's money. In order to do my job effectively, I have to work with the bad guys. You're not going away. I'm not going away. I take your cash. You feel safe. It builds trust. Pays for my overtime. What about last night? Was that you building trust? I don't know. What was it for you? Look... I can't give you anything. You know that. But I don't want you hurt by this either. I'll talk to Jax. Where are we land on this? Maybe we can throw something your way. Give you a win. No more dead bodies. I promise. Okay. I can't lay low on this, Philip. I have to dig in. Right, okay, I get him. I gotta go. So lay low. Are you kidding me? The old, uh, yeah. and they you have a freaking whorehouse full of dead <laughs> bodies. Yeah. Lay low for a while. Nobody will know. I love that line. You know Nobody. why you, oh. you know why I take that money? Yeah. Because it's Cause money. It's money. <laughs> Some great writers on those lines and stuff. Oh man. And, uh, of course they kiss at the end. The old, like I said, in the other podcast episodes, the old vagina is getting in the way and Scotty mm-hmm. is not thinking clearly. There you go. She says. See, I don't think Scotty's doing too bad, though. Even even with that there, I mean, yeah, he's, you know, giving her a little bit of info, but he ain't no, he he's not giving her anything. He's not. And he's keeping her, I think he's kind of keeping her off their ass he is. by giving yep. them, just giving her just enough BS that well, she feels like she's getting something. Mm-hmm. She's not keeping him off her ass. <laughs> <laughs> right on there. Just saying. Right in that ass. Yeah, he's all over that. <laughs> So I think I think that's kind of keeping her away though. Yeah, true, true. Good call. Um, and she says she takes the money for overtime. There we go. Is she telling the truth or not? Eh. I, I'm just going all in. She's. She, I don't think she's dirty. I oh. mean, I don't think she like is trying to kill people or anything like that. I just think she's on the take. Yeah, she pays for it with her overtime. She sleeps with him. She gets the information she needs. It's all about you know, her. I looking really good. think later on you're, we're going to come to find out that she is going to be part of taking them. I'm. I, I'm serious. No way. I do. I, do. I think so. All right. Yeah, uh, I, I kind of, I kind of agree with you. Is I think she's going to come in and have something to do with taking them down. The only problem is, is the way that we're thinking. It's like real life. Like all of us, it's going to come oh. out that you know you're sleeping with this guy and you're taking money. You know, and it's Hollywood. So the okay. way that we're looking at it, or maybe like, there ain't they, no way that you could ever freaking get. Maybe they know, put her. In. Maybe they put her in this exact position so that she could get into that club. Right. Maybe because they know that she can. There you go. I love it. She can play the role and this is what you need to do. Okay. I can do that. Right. Yep. And it is TV because the screwing, no matter what position you're putting, you can't screw informants that your case is gone. If you screw informants, it's it's gone. If you do, (laughs) it has happened. It has happened. All right. So Nero, here was a, the little fight scene here where uh, Nero and uh, Jack's got a little bit of aggression out of their Mm -hmm. systems and they start, uh, what was it? Jackson crew show up. Oh, they showed up at the bakery and Nero and Broski are there. Of course they get in their little fisticuffs there. Nero's pissed. Oh yeah, dude. Oh, he yeah. was mad. He was mad. He's got a right to be though. No, dude. Exactly. He's 
Kid's yeah. been threatened now. Right. Jack, Jax was, has basically lied to him over and over and right. over again. Finally starting to figure out a little bit. What was your original thought? Did you think that, uh, was he going to give Jax up or was he going to save the kid? Or save himself, I should say, or get himself killed? Nero? Right. I, did, I, didn't, I didn't think he'd give Jax up. I didn't uh, think he'd give Jax up I didn't either. either. I thought he'd probably take the fall yeah. over Jax. I, I didn't think that he would give him up. I agree. Yeah. All right, so he call you know Nero tells Jax you're a liar and and uh, that's why all that he really blames Jax for the dead Diosa girls. Of course, he doesn't know up to this point what's going on with everything. Of course, they're going to kill my boy. He says. Mm-hmm. All right, and finally Jax comes clean, which he should have. I never know why he kept that from Nero. Anyways, it doesn't make any sense why he would keep from Nero that Jax comes clean and tells him that the Chinese killed Terra, and of course his love and touch Gemma. Um, is the main witness. I was going to say, I guess you can see where Jax gets it. He gets his mom. His mom's the same damn way. Right. Lies and keeps shit from people or keeps stuff from people. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And and uh, of course, because it's Gemma, that weighs some great credibility in Nero's eyes, right? Mm-hmm. If Nero saw the Chinese at the house the night of the murder and she says it's true, right? Nero's all right. in. He's got to go all in with that. Right. Because you're not going to say, well, she's lying. So, and Jax, of course, apologizes to him. Um, and he finally tells him, I am going to destroy Lynn and nothing going to stop me. Mm-hmm. That's when you know it's going to get real. Yeah. You know it's going <laughs> down. Says he doesn't want to lose him as a partner or a friend. Um, he does tell Nero that he needs him to decide which side of the fight he wants to be on because shit is going down as Chewy. Did you say that, Chewy? He did. Yeah. Shit's going down. <laughs> all right. So, uh, and of course, Nero, we all know he's, he, he didn't want to get in this fight in the first place. He's tired of it, but he's in it now. Cause he gunned down some people too. Right. Yeah. And yeah, he was jumped out so of the funny. van there and wiped out oh, all those dude. guys. And he's been trying to get out of this right. life right now. He's just been drugged back in it. Yep. Yep. And he's, uh, he's in deep now. So, yeah. uh, they talk with Broski and tell him someone gave up the location of the guns. This is kind of what we're the whole theme yeah. of this whole thing, which yeah. we really, you know, I don't know, maybe next episode it will be revealed. I don't know. Within the next two episodes, I'm thinking they're going to reveal. Yeah, it's funny because they've really, he made a good point. Though. They, they put they, jury they, in the they, background. They cut him out. Mm-hmm. You know, it's he's yeah. off in the background and now, but he ex, what he said is exactly what I think happened. Yeah, we haven't mm-hmm. heard from him in a couple episodes now. Uh-uh. Yeah, he's just going to pop back up. Right. And uh, when they find out who did it. And then we're still waiting on trying to figure out who that kid was that got killed. That's his son. We don't know that. That's his I son. Think, that's what you believe, I right? I think it's his son. That's what I believe. Okay. Got to be his son. So, was it you and Lurch that think it's his gay lover? I do. <laughs> I think it's his gay lover. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think it's, but yeah, I don't know. I think it's, it's his son. It's it still doesn't his, make any his, sense. It's that his he, son or his nephew. Why? That, that was my first son thought, his, his son. But you weren't in the studio for this. No. Here, here's my argument to that. Yeah. Why? That's not protocol. I know it's TV. It's not motorcycle club protocol. You don't. Why would you hide to to Sam Crow to to the Redwood Originals that that's your boy? If it's your boy, you'd say, yeah. You wouldn't call him your muscle. You're saying that's my boy. Right. Basically, don't touch him. Why would uh, you hide yeah, the fact? You have a point. I don't yeah. get it. You do have a point. Though. I'll give you that, but I still think it's Hollywood, and I think it's his. It's it's his blood. Somehow it's his blood. Right. And and it may be an illegitimate mm. son that he you know that he doesn't I, you know I don't know I just think you know if you're in a club dude you just tell him and then he would have been and the protected. fact that he's there with the guy in the house and it's just the two of them right yeah, there's I some think. major relationship there because he took that hard you know crying right. oh and, big time you know he yeah. took that hard and now he's obviously retaliating mm-hmm. against yeah. Jax for the murder and all that kind of stuff so Jax uh, needs to talk oh yeah Broski says Border Patrol watches the old warehouse them at night. This is when uh, Borowski tells him that, yeah, someone gave up the location of the guns, got you. Borowski says, Border Patrol watches it at night. Jack says they need to talk to that guy, apparently the Border Patrol guy, mm-hmm. which they haven't done yet. Have they? No. This came up, but he hasn't really talked to that Border Patrol guy. Oh, yes, they did. Yeah, that that was the, uh, that's right, the Desmond. Remember that pawn shop owner guy? Yeah. He's yes. the one. Sorry. Yes. I don't know. Mm-hmm. My yes. bad. Yes, they did. Right. So Desmond yep. owns that pawn shop. They go down to the pawn shop. And he says um, uh, he's, that he's there all night, apparently, this guy. So he must, I don't get that. If he works so, as a side gig for the Border Patrol, I don't know. They watch it all night. <clears throat> or he watches it. I didn't really quite understand that. But uh, go ahead, Chewie, you got a but question? does Jerry know that the sons are, are at the warehouse watching those guns? Jerry who? Jerry. The the, the sheriff? The, no, the guy from um, jury? Indian Hill. Jury. J-U-R-Y. Jury. Right, jury. Uh, I don't know. So that's the, that's the question. I don't think he knows. 
So that <laughs> that was one of my questions. And see, and that's the thing too. I think, he I gets keep... a. Are we at the point where we're talking about the guys getting? They're in talking with the guy in the in the store, and that's why I think partially you might be right too, because that's what was my question last episode uh, with when I think Lurch was in the studio mm -hmm. and you were is okay, okay. Jury knows that um, you know that that the, they took down the Chinese, and is he telling the Chinese? But how do they know where the guns were? Right? Is that what you're saying? Jerry does know that, so he could tell. Jerry, he could somehow get a hold of them and say, <laughs> "Look, this is." what is going on right but do you think that maybe jury is in with baroski he's a chapter president he's gonna be able to find out that information oh, if yeah. he wanted to. oh yeah true yeah you're right good call all right let's move on from that um anyways d d uh he apparently the, this desmond guy at this pawn shop didn't have a lot of answers so remember what they did ships threatens to put the flute up his ass <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. i'm gonna <laughs> shove this flute right up his ass yeah and then, and then it, uh, what's the uh sergeant of arms name uh for who? smiley or uh oh happy happy yeah happy. he goes he goes you are gay that's right <laughs> yeah because uh uh tiggy right you he was all so excited gay, about says, it yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> all right and uh this desmond ends up before they shove the flute up his ass well, then baroski says at <laughs> least lube it up a little <laughs> that's right at least lube it up a little i do remember that dude that was funny oh god um so he didn't apparently desmond didn't know um who it was that called him. So some guy apparently, right. he says some guy called my cell phone. Right. But and the guy comes so, clean and says he got an offer for 2000, right. To avoid the warehouse last right. night. He said the money was supposed to be, right. so they gave him 2000. Mm -hmm. Don't go to the warehouse and right. watch it. Right. Is right. this right. making yep. sense? Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm making sure. Yep. No, that's, that's correct. And he called him on his personal cell. Um, so Barofsky. and they questioned him about that. Well, how, yes. and the guy doesn't say, he didn't say who he was or no. Well, how does he know who, how did he get your number? Right. Like, right. I don't know. Right. Yep. Yep. And then so Borowski's like, well, how does some guy that doesn't know you get your personal cell number and you don't know who he is? And then he gets pissed off and puts yeah. a bullet between Dude. his eyes. <laughs> Borowski's <laughs> cold, man. Just straight then up. He's old. You never know who you can trust. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be honest. I didn't see that coming. I thought they were going to no. beat the crap out of him and leave him there. Yeah. Freaking Borowski. I was so, thinking they were going to shove that flute up his ass. And I'm like, geez. Hard to get answers out of a Whoa. dead guy. Right. True. Exactly. Yeah. True. Exactly. And so we've been seeing these scenes. Um, you want to talk about Abel. And uh, he, of course, this is all part of the script. It right? is. Abel's it, like, it's his gonna be like his father. And you made the ultimate mm -hmm. where we're going to see Abel at the table. My at the wife end did. Of the, yeah, My or your wife, wife did. did. That's yeah. right. Yeah. That's right. But that, yeah, that's that was a pretty good scene where they he comes, they come in there and he's got the hammer and mm -hmm. the little baby's there too. And yep, he wants to leave. He doesn't like being there. You know, he's tired of probably all the crap that's going on. He doesn't have, he doesn't see his dad. His mom's right. dead. Well, right. not his mom. No, his mom's alive. Right. But uh, but he the don't mom know that it. he know what that he knows most of is dead, and so his dad never comes around. So he's just the kid just has it. Got that hammer, is hitting the wall. I want to leave now, and he's hitting the wall. Yep. You know so how they it's kind of a sad thing, but they're throwing those little scenes in for a reason, though. Oh, they are. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, they're just out of the place. All of a sudden, you're like, okay, where'd that come from, and yeah. was that necessary? Yes, it is necessary because they're building up to something. Well, and, and um, if you. Nero made a made an, uh, a statement in the last last episode about no it wasn't Nero it was uh, Bobby when he was talking to um, um, Wendy Wendy uh -huh. he says Jax even as a kid used to used to hold things in oh yeah right so mm -hmm. good point good point um, hmm. so do you guys remember this you want to go either of you this where Wendy and uh, Unser to have a little chat yeah no okay Wendy tells Unser that a Chinese guy pulled them over remember where the when the Chinese oh, pulled, right. uh, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. pulled him, uh, her and Nero, remember? Yeah. And uh, so she spills that to him. Yep. And uh, so, of course, Unser's interested, like, what what happened? And she tells him he was pissed. Um, the Chinese guy was and said, blame Jax for stealing the gun. So Unser's getting a little information even from Wendy. And here. that's when she says, do you think that has something to do with Diosa? Right. Right. And so, and so, yeah, and then he's, uh, answers, yeah, yeah, answers, answers. Poor answer. He gets so involved in this crap. It's I know, bad. dude. <laughs> he gets so tied yeah. up with it. Oh, he's caught. I just don't all know why. I don't know heart. why he puts up with it. Just because of Gemma, probably got a free spot to put his trailer. I guess not anymore. <laughs> not anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get your damn trailer yeah. off my property. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. that that was at the end of uh, last night's right. episode six, right? So yeah. Nero sits down with uh, Lynn. Oh, and they have a nice little discussion here. Mm-hmm. This ain't easy for me, Henry. I'm with Jax's mom, connected to him. It's more than just business. 
Yeah, I understand that. But pussy, pardon the disrespect, can't get in the way of what it is we do. You know that. Yeah. So Jax has brought me into his uh, inner circle. He's laid out what he wants to do. Which is? He's going to call you, try to set up a meet at the port. Warehouses, near the ones you hit. He's going to tell you that he's going to give you your heroin back as a gesture of goodwill. Just be him and one other guy, probably the Scott. And then after the handoff, his crew and a shitload of other guys from other charters, they're going to pile out of that warehouse, take you all out. Yeah, you just called 10 minutes ago. Set the meat. Him and chips. I would bring everybody you got, man. Because you're going to need an army. All right, so, mm-hmm. yeah. That He's was a setting them up, up him. right there. Up and, yep. yep, bring everybody. And bring well, what's everybody. funny is... Did you believe it at that time? No. I didn't either. I knew he was setting yeah. the Chinese up. I knew right. he wasn't actually... Especially when he getting, says, bring everybody. Yes. That way he's got his whole crew there. No, no, no. Right. I knew I knew he was setting them up. Which And, and, and they set it up really good because, obviously, uh, Nero tells Jax, call him, call uh, Lynn before I get there. And... Uh, talk to him about this meet right so then when Nero gets there and he talks to him lynn's like yeah jocks called me about 10 minutes ago and said mm-hmm. so he's lynn's like yeah this is happening it's legit right. yep it's right legit. that's a good call yep. now juice we all know is going crazy remember he shoots the uh chinese guy because he thinks remember he sees in right. the diosa slaughter and so he thinks the chinese are after him yeah. and juice, that manager his the juice, manager of that the hotel. guy that guy just <laughs> He's annoying. He's at such this. a pussy, dude. I'm sorry. He's annoying at this point. Get I, him out of here. I know he causes so much problems, dude. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah. So we'll, we'll uh, answer, of course, and Je- Gemma show up and they find the dead maintenance guy, the Poor hotel answer. manager or Poor whatever. Answer. It's like, what are you thinking? <laughs> yeah. I know. He's the owner of the. He goes. He's got keys to all these apartments. Right. Right. Yep, and clean uh, that mess up. Yeah, then you got Unzer there. He's got to clean that freaking mess up. How's that old guy lift a dead body? Yeah, yeah, I know, Jeez. dude. He's probably gonna wind up with Ebola from that. <laughs> <laughs> Juice says uh, to Gemma, "We did this, blaming Chi- uh, yeah. blaming Chinese yeah. for Tara's murder, right?" So mm-hmm. Juice is already, and we know what happens. We're gonna talk a little bit about that, but you can tell Juice is kind of turning on Gemma at this point. Like, you know what? Well, you know, we did this. We all know Juice is nuts anyways. Right. But the one part that's funny, after he shoots the guy, he walks up and the guy's dead, obviously dead. He's got his eyes open and Juice is like, stop looking at me. And he <laughs> fills him with about three or four right. more bullets. That right. dude is right crazy. in the face. Yeah. Freaking crazy. So uh, Unser interrogates Gem, of course. And uh, this is finally when she comes clean with him about, okay, the Chinese killed Tara. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Uh, okay. So she's got to lie to everybody now. Kind of comes clean about her, about her lie. <laughs> right. Right. Um, Unser calls Sheriff Jerry and tells her uh, that it was Lynn's crew because he just found out and he's supposed to be right. He's a and what are the yeah he's a some consultant type of a, yeah consultant type dude he's right an investigator giving her investigator. I loved oh. that line a couple episodes ago too. You're an investigator. You can carry, but you have to provide your own gun. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Um, so the club is convinced that the Chinese killed Tara, he tells her, and Sam Crow took out Lynn's uh, gun shipment. So he's just basically telling Jerry everything. So she's got a lot of knowledge off this now. Um, of course, she always wants to know who's informant is, and she eventually finds out in episode two. She knows it's uh, she knows it's Gemma now. Um, they reach out to Stockton and put a tail on. He wants her to reach out to Stockton and put a tail on Lynn and his associates, and we know what happens there, which we'll get into um yeah so answers think something's going down at the port and we all know what went down mm-hmm. there the dirty stockton cops and all that with lynn member and yep. pretending like it's a takedown and all that but jackson chibs meet at the port lynn and the crew show up and uh nobody is there just remember this just the heroin yeah lying there wasn't it yep. just in the garage or something yeah they take them out at gunpoint they put jackson uh scotty Right on his knee, on both their knees, and uh, mm-hmm. they're pointing the guns at him, saying, "Hey, hey, hey, where's you know where's?" Didn't our they heroin? shoot? They shoot the whole warehouse up, right? Oh yeah, because they because they, they think it's full think, of people, right? Because they asked Jacks, "Where's my heroin at?" And he says, "Well, it's in the in right. the warehouse." And they're like, "Oh, well, Nero told us you have a bunch of guys waiting right. in the warehouse, right?" So he tells his men, they go over there, they fill it full of holes, hoping that when they <laughs> open it, there's just a bunch and of dead they, bodies. Then they open the the door, and here's a little bag sitting there. Mm-hmm. And we got a little, that was a pretty heated discussion here. Peace offering, Henry. 
You were once short. Marks gave a kilo to the Niners. He's calling all the shots, man. I'm done with this war. Yeah? Well, I am next team in it! Marks ordered all those hits on you, man! We had no choice! Come on. Guys, the guys are in control. He's going to swallow all of us up. Man. I love his accent. We made the wrong choice. I get that now. I get that. But we can help you bring down Marks. We got Tyler and the Niners in my corner. You have been lying to me this whole time. Why the hell should I believe you now? Take us with you, man. Take us with you. We'll sit down with you and Alvarez. Figure out a way to bring down Black. If we're lying, kill both of us. Come on, man. Where do you stand with Padilla? He never showed up at Diosa. I haven't seen that. I ain't seen that fool in days. Think Nero's lying? Take this kid? I don't know. Take him. Whatever that was. <laughs> um, so let's set it up. So they take Jax and Chibs, throw them in the car, right? Mm-hmm. Set it, go for it. This they, is the whole takedown well, and all they, that. They start to leave, and then the um, uh, Borowski's guys come in. So Stockton PD. Stockton PD takes right, them down. In black and white. Uh-huh. Gets them out. Gets them out of the car. Gets them down. And that's when Jax tells them, they put everybody else on the fence except for mm-hmm. Lynn. He says, no, leave him. Come Puts him in the middle of the street right yeah, on his knees or something. So, Kung so then, Fu fighting, Tim. Yeah. <laughs> so, then, so then Jax walks up and starts talking to Lynn, and Lynn's like, what the hell is going on here? And then they start the whole. Well, didn't they get in an old brawl? Oh, they did. They started yeah, they getting did. in a brawl, right? Which I, which yeah, I think is, I think is mm-hmm. hilarious because, yeah, they, we everybody wants to think Jax is a, a bad guy. You know, he's a tough guy, and mm-hmm. right? <laughs> you can totally tell that this Lynn guy knows martial arts. He's throwing kicks, right? Kicks and all kinds of stuff. And Jax, so I said kung fu fighting. <laughs> he ends up beating his ass, and it's just <laughs> yeah. like, well, okay. Right. Only in Hollywood. But. So Jax lays in on Lynn. Of course, Jax tells him that he killed his wife. And this, did you see this though? I mean, even Lynn. He's like, what are you talking about? Even You're he was crazy. Like, I had nothing to do yeah. with that. But I think it hit him. This is what this is about. Right. I didn't do it, but he finally, I think you just saw it. It was a mm-hmm. very specific mm-hmm. scene. Mm-hmm. And I think Lynn was like, now I freaking understand what this is about. You think I killed your freaking wife. Right. You know? That's my take anyways. Nero shows up and Jax tells him that he told Nero to bring his entire crew. Mm-hmm. Um, Jax takes Lynn one-on-one, of course. We know all that. Um, Chibs and Bobby pull Jax off before the real cops show up, of course, because the real cops showed up. They were real cops, but they're dirty, right? Right. Mm-hmm. And But then, the so you, basically to set that up, you got the dirty working cops. Working for Borowski. Working for Borowski, but then the non-dirty cops actually show up. And of course, at that point, the dirty well, cops well, pretend like it's a big we gotta go back. heroin case. She, uh, and uh-huh. this, this is another thing. Uh, Jerry, the, the sheriff, gets a call mm-hmm. and is That's advised right. of that. So she then she calls Chibs to tell Chibs, hey. That's right. I got a call. The real cops are on. Their cops are on their way there. You guys need to get out of there. Get the hell out they're, of there. They're on their way. Yep. Good call. And uh, so they pull Jax off before he can't finish Lynn. Right. And- Anyways, and he's trying to make Lynn say Tara, say her name, Tara. Oh, was he? Her see? name is Tara. As he's punching him. Nice, yeah, nice recall. And of course, Lynn's crew at this point. How do you remember all this stuff? And you can't remember. <laughs> oh, geez. Name? Here we go. <laughs> the the giant and the bull. <laughs> oh, geez. <laughs> bull, bullshit. <laughs> I knew that was coming up. All right, so of course, Lynn's crew. Are, they're all under arrest on drug and gun charges as we speak right now. So, all right, a couple real, we'll do some uh, interesting things here. So we all know we're going to get right into some about juice, right? He takes Gemma. We all know that takes her out um, in the middle of nowhere. Right now. She told him he, she was taking him to her father's house. Right. 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 Uh, I, but see this whole scene. It's funny. Gemma is, is so at this point, it's weird because she she's now like juice is losing his mind. That's that's going right. through her head, and I'm like, uh, you've already lost yours. You guys are both right. They're both have crazy. Lost your mind. You should go out and commit suicide together. Mm-hmm. But uh, that's what she's thinking, and she's he's sleeping in there in the car, and she's gonna. She so gotta what you know? Where was 
was that where she was actually taking him? Do you think she wasn't taking? Him no, she was gonna. Guys. I think she was gonna shoot him. No, herself. she went the you opposite. She, she went the do? opposite way, and she you was think gonna, she was gonna take him. Out she was him. gonna kill him. Mm-hmm. 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 Yep, I do because she reached for a gun yep. in the car. She grabbed his gun and he saw it. Here's a little. But then they started talking after that. They did. Play your clip. And here's what they said. Got a ways to go. Go back to sleep. The hell are we doing in Salt Springs? Why are we headed north? <sighs> Jax was worried about me traveling. Sent Rogue River to meet us. Had to change the plan. Nero will be helping us. Nero? Yeah. yeah. Don't worry. We can trust him. I was glad to help. I don't want to see anyone else dead. We're going to meet a friend of his. Former Coyote's going to help you get into Mexico. His name is out here. Middle of nowhere? No, I thought the parking lot at Walmart would be a little obvious. I'm a Darvney. Junk your mom? Yeah. I'm the one who killed her. It wasn't an overdose. Why? Jax's order. That's what you do when someone's a threat. That night, it was so deep at the Osa. Nero was trying to help me. I was in such bad shape. I confessed. I told the truth. Jax lied about Darby. That's why the club wants me dead. I betrayed our king. I'm sorry. Yeah, me too. That's also how I know you're lying to me, Jim. Nero would never help me. That's when I'm listening to her tell him that. I know. And she says, uh, Nero's going to help him. I'm like, right. oh, you dumb bitch. Exactly. Yeah. I love it, dude. All yeah. going down. Yeah. Love it. And I'm I'm just so, I'm ticked. Uh, Juice needs to go. So let's just speak. He's just, he's you're a, right. He's a coward. <laughs> He needs to he go. Because he shoot her. Get him out. Yeah. He takes he her out in the desert. Needs to get out. Right. They wreck. Because he, he dude, sees her she, grabbing the gun. Dude, she's taking you out to kill you. Right. She's yeah. going to kill you, and mm-hmm. you're going to spare her. I know. He don't got the balls, oh. dude. He don't got the balls. <laughs> He's a coward. I agree. But yet he'll kill a Chinese guy that owns a motel room. And the sheriff. Yeah. Sheriff Eli. Yeah, he's just... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. They couldn't kill Gemma then, though. You know... Jeff, oh, you dude. Can't I was hoping... Because everybody's annoyed by her, and everybody wants no, her to die, hoping, so they're going to keep yeah. her around. Yeah. She's, she's, she's too... Big of part of well, she's the plot. Kind of the glue that keeps everything together. Right. Can't that keeps the show going. She keeps right. causing all the problems. Between her, if you didn't have her and Juice causing all this chaos, yeah. Yeah. then it would really be boring because mm-hmm. they <laughs> cause all these problems, dude. <laughs> so we know, uh, of course, last night they open up and uh, Juice uh, is, of course, the opening scene is, is Gemma walking in her heels right down the road God, into I'm that so trucker mad. cafe. I was so mad. I, I saw know. her. I was telling my wife. I knew before, she wouldn't die, Before it though. started, I was like, I just hope that she dies in this episode, but I don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> and then the first damn thing that we see is her walking down the road. Yep. And she goes to that trucker cafe. Diner. And we'll talk about that a little bit. But uh, of course, Juicy r- grabs a couple blow pops at the convenience store and he robs the guy. Blow there's going to be yeah, yeah, he, oh, yeah, yeah that's yeah, all he yeah, picked yeah. up suckers, like suckers. Sucker, you know, yeah, right. Blow there's going to yep. be some I don't know there almost seems to be that they made you believe there was going to be something more to do with that too right. and, he, he orders, he, and he's always wearing his cut yeah and he orders the cigarettes I know he's not even part of the club he orders right. the yellow he said G's the uh, yellow cigarettes yeah the cigarettes. And, yellow so at the cigarettes. Very, and at the very end of that sh- that thing that happens it shows the guy laying there well they zoom in on the, mm-hmm. the cigarettes yep. so you think well, that's going to be something that comes back. He pistol because, whipped yeah. that guy pretty right, good. Yeah. And he was bleeding. Yeah, Wonder if like he's going to die. Them. Yeah, right. that's what I was thinking. Yeah, that, that he might. It might be a murder. Yeah, but you're right. They did show the but cigarettes. They zoomed very in on the cigarettes. close. And I'm thinking, well, maybe the club's going to find that out because he smokes. Uh, right, so. right. It could be evidence. Maybe it's, that, my, maybe it's my mind thinking off. But no, you're you're absolutely right. Um, so Jackson Tyler and the Grim Bastards meet. Of course, Tyler is uh, a sub set of the Niners and uh and then of course the Grim Bastards. Mm-hmm. Here's a little conversation they had. You talk to all of us. Niners, he's dug. August knows what Lynn knows. He can't prove it, but he's setting up to cut you out. And by cut me out, it's 
gonna kill all you white boys. I'm gonna have to let him know that's not part of my plan. Yeah, I'm gonna let you deliver that message. So what's his play? On the streets, he's gonna take out your support, the bastards. Shit. Yeah, he's gonna use these dubs. Why not the Niners? My guess is he's saving us to take you on. And if that happens, brother, we better know which way to jump. The wheelchair bitch is still in the VA. He's running points for his dub now. The bitch that took out three of your guys? Dulane? Yeah, that shit ain't gonna happen. Where's Dulane not now? It's not my heart, man. It is now, brother. You wanna know which way we jump? Fast and forward. I hope you got a plan. I got guns and manpower. That's the plan. I'll track down Dulane. But you gotta take it from there. We will. We're gonna handle all these stuff. You're looking at my whole table here, man. We lose another guy with just a few black guys on bikes. Let me ask you something. Who in your crew could cut it? You follow MC. Maybe. You get patched over. Who's gonna make it? What? You talking about the Suns? Oh, well, that's the last time I checked, brother, with a wrong shade of white. Just answer the question. I wouldn't take Sticky. Too unpredictable. Menace is solid. Bowler, maybe. Are you, you serious about this? One miracle at a time. First, we gotta shut down August Marks. Oh, yeah. So let's break that little conversation down. There's a lot to that if everybody didn't catch it all. And correct me if I'm getting off track here with it. But basically, they talk Tyler and Jax. Basically, the, in a nutshell, uh, Marks is got his sight set to take Jax out. Yep. How are they going to do that? They're going to start by taking the Grim Bastards out, who yep. are his support. Tyler says, or Jack says, well, why not just take you out, Tyler, and your crew? Tyler says, well, because I think he's saving us. The one-niners. To right? take you out. The one-niners. Right. Yeah. Right. They're a subset, um, I think. Yeah, the one-niners. Mm-hmm. So, um, but, but basically, that's so. So that, that's it in a nutshell, and, and Tyler thinks he's set to take him out. So they do their you know little plan. Very interesting. Do you think Jax, do you really think he would patch them over? Because the Sam... Because Sons of Anarchy doesn't take I black memory. Yeah, that's what I, he was saying. But why would he ask him all that? What's the purpose of that? I don't know. I was trying to figure that out. Just nah, build, I, build in trust or what? Because I thought the same thing. They're not going to take black. There's no way they'll, they'll yeah, take weird. black. Mm-mm. Well, but, he said one miracle at a time. Yeah, I know. I know. I was kind of surprised by that. So obviously, I don't I don't know if he's building trust or just trying to or maybe set him up or, or what. Or trying to beef the club up. And so they're going to change their bylaws. I don't Could know, be. man. Could be. It's going to be interesting to yeah. see what happens with patching over because that blew me. Mm-hmm. And even the Grim Bastards president was like, are you serious? Yeah. You don't take black? What, what are you yeah. talking what about? You, what does he say? I'm the wrong shade of white. Right. I'm the wrong yeah. shade of white. Yeah. So Chibs meets with Sheriff Jerry. Mm-hmm. Scotty. Scotty hmm. calls him. Scotty. 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 Mm-hmm. Chibs wants to know uh, how the Lynn takedown went. Um, yeah. Now, so he asked her, uh, uh, arrest, let's see, the arresting officer told the DA, oh yeah, so here's here's what it is. So Jerry tells him, hey, the arresting officers told the DA you guys had nothing to do with the takedown, right? Yep. So obviously it's the dirty officers yep. that told the DA. Mm-hmm. So basically you're, and, and that you cooperated. Now Chibs is worried about that um, because she told him, hey. He doesn't want. He doesn't it, want. Yeah. Right. He right. doesn't want people knowing that they're cooperating with the police. And they're not, but. He, but he that's what that she getting told around, him, right. right? Yeah, he doesn't want that getting around. We don't need that word out on the street. So Jerry wants to know whose payroll the cops are on, those dirty cops. Yeah. And of course, she I think she even throws out, is it Borowski? But he mm-hmm. never tells her. Mm-hmm. But she knows, you know, she's got enough intel that she knows Borowski's has got to be dirty too. Here's a l- funny scene. So they're in that little garage under, you know, whatever that covered parking area and stuff. And uh, I just had to uh, listen to this again because they talk about the having sex and stuff and go back and forth. So here we go. Yeah. Thanks for yesterday. For the sex or the heads up? For the heads up. You should be thanking me for the sex. (laughs) Oh, hey. I hear the 
DA is getting pressure to offer Lynn a deal. Get him to flip. On the triads? I doubt it. It's got to be local. The call came from the Oakland City Council. Shit. You think they're trying to get Lynn to give up the MC? I gotta go. There I, you go. I gotta go. I yeah. gotta go. So obviously she's digging for information oh, yeah. there. You yep. know, time. Trying to get some stuff, but that's mm-hmm. just a funny exchange too. It is. It is. And uh, that's well, a the heads up. <laughs> that's a big deal <laughs> if they're trying to turn Lynn to go against Sam Crow in an you know, in a plea offer, which could happen mm-hmm. if Lynn Maybe, but I don't think they got anything on Lynn. I think they're she's just throwing that out there trying right. to see what type of bait she gets. Right. Good call. Good call. Um, well, th- I think they would kill in him that for episode. It. She says Lynn is done, right? Uh, in that in that little sequence there, she says Lynn is done. Yeah, but I I think that and that's what he says. Do mm-hmm. you think they're trying to Lynn's cooperating mm-hmm. with the DA? But they don't have anything on him. On who? Lynn. Yeah, they do. They have guns and heroin. Oh, you're right. Yeah, yep, he's they looking, got the heroin on him. Yeah, right, right. Right. They charged him with that. So in, in a plea bargain, he could give up what he knows about Sam Crow and mm-hmm. all the deals they've done and all that. So it concerns Chibs as you can tell there. Um, all right. Gemma um, ends up at the trucker cafe. We know that some stuff goes down here. Oh, Leah Michelle makes her mm-hmm. appearance. Did you see that? She's a cutie, man. Yeah. Pretty she's, plain Jane in this episode yeah, but though. She's a cutie. Yeah. Is that the waitress? Yeah. Move over to your She's mic. from Glee. There you Glee, go. From Glee, right? There you oh. go. Uh, yes. She's apparently, I didn't know her, but we looked her up yeah, in she's, a prior episode. Yeah. And what are you watching Glee for? I don't watch Glee. Uh, yeah, right. mm-hmm. yeah. He knew. Mm. I had to look it up. <laughs> look at, look at <laughs> <There's> <laughs> what, all what, the guys. What we were talking about uh, earlier, someone's nickname that we're going to call the JJ. Mm-hmm. Told you. I think one of the. Uh, one right. Of, one of Jake. <laughs> I didn't say it, Jake. Well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I think that his his wife watched Glee. So. Okay. There you go. No, I do not watch Glee. Dude, Whatever. Sorry. You're so full of crap. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> so Gemma ends up at this trucker cafe. Of course, she's talking to herself in the booth. Actress Leah she's, Michelle. She's so psycho. She's talking to Tara, actually. <laughs> yeah, she is. Right. Having a very good conversation yeah. with her. Yeah, and the, the waitress, of course, notices. And uh, they go out. Um, and she actually asked her who you're talking to at the table. They end up smoking outside. Mm-hmm. This is the whole smoke them if you got them kind of deal. And uh, Gemma tells her that her son lost his wife recently. And she actually says that it was her fault. Mm-hmm. However, she doesn't let her in on any of the details. No, because the girl asks. Right. And then she doesn't. And then actually the girl offers her her car to go sleep in. True. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I just think that's a little bit of Gemma wonder- maybe coming around to some acceptance of some sort in her own twisted little world i wonder if that's the end of her too is that she, waitress uh i don't know because they, she's asking because what's funny yeah at, when she says oh you're a good girl she tells the girl that mm-hmm. right the mm-hmm. waitress the waitress just looks at her well even Gemma doesn't answer Gemma admits basically to the waitress that she had something to do with tara's death saying that said something like it was her fault mm-hmm. you know she asked how did she die and she said it was my fault that's what i mean she's some right. sort of acceptance right right, right. which is in her the first acceptance that right. we've heard from Gemma, and telling anybody right of anything that she takes mm-hmm. some sort of accountability right that so. it was her fault mm-hmm. um so answer shows up of course because uh, Gemma called him to pick her up at the trucker cafe this is when she you know tells answer that hey juice took her out and blah in the desert but he couldn't pull the trigger and, and answer's like you're so full of shit does, did he, he say that? basically tells her that you're no that's not he goes why why what when, when they start arguing about this whole thing when mm-hmm. when Gemma tells him the story he's like no that's that's why would that happen why would he try to kill Gemma mm-hmm. is that what you're saying mm-hmm. oh yeah okay um so Unser tells Gemma that she needs to call, tell Sheriff Jerry so this is where he encourages encourages Gemma to uh turn state's evidence right Yep. and tell him that it was the yep. Chinese. Yep. And of course, Gemma's all not about talking mm-hmm. to the police. Um, and, and, and Unser knows, based off of what she's telling him, he he knows she's lying about this whole thing. Microphone. He, he knows, there you go. Unser knows that uh, Gemma's lying about this whole story that that uh, she's trying to give him. Who, who's, who did you say that again? Unser. Unser knows what? That that Gemma, the story that she's trying to give about what happened, he knows she's full oh, of shit. Oh, with the Chinese? 
No, with why she's out there and why what happened. Oh, right. Yeah, he, he keeps knows asking. Remember, Wendy goes to the bathroom mm-hmm. and then Unzer tells. Right. Gemma, tell me the real right, story. Yeah, what's the real story mm-hmm. or why were you out there? Gotcha. But she does tell him. No. No, uh, I don't think she does. Actually. Yeah, she says he couldn't pull the trigger. Right? No, no. no. Well, yeah, she says. Gemma tells Unzer that Juice couldn't that, pull that, the trigger. Yeah, that she says that he. he but he doesn't that, say anything he, about that, Nero as to why. You know how she gave oh Nero no no away none of the details stuff. but Je- right. but Gemma just to get clear tells him yeah Juice took me out in the desert but he couldn't pull the trigger am I wrong no that's what she okay. that's what she says to him but he doesn't believe her because okay. he's, he's wondering why Juice would do this to her right but she told him he just doesn't believe her mm-hmm. okay right. right okay just want to make sure we're on the same track there Unzer's gonna have to end up putting that together with the with uh, Tara or something. No, he's gonna. You know, because he's right now. He's going. Why in the hell would he? You know, the, right. only, the only ally that Juice has is Gemma. That's what. Yeah, that, right. and that's what. And yeah, and that's why he says, "Gemma, you're full of shit," because you're the only ally that he has. Why right. would he kill you? Right. I get. I. I feel you're laying mm-hmm. down now. And so mm-hmm. she's telling him, "Yeah, he took me out to kill me." And he's like, "You're full of shit. Why? Why would he do that?" Right. So he's, yep. he knows something's going on. He knows something's goofy. He does. Guys always digging. Anyways, we know that uh, Gemma doesn't want to talk to the cops, but later she meets with Jax and she tells her that Jax even tells her, you know, you need to go to Sheriff Jerry Mm -hmm. and tell her what you saw. Yeah. All right. Jax says if if they have Lynn and here's what I come back to Lynn, they believe because Chibs goes back and tells Jax, hey, you know what? I just met with Sheriff Jerry and the D.A. might be trying to get the Chinese to talk against you. Mm -hmm. And so Jax has got to put a plan into effect, which is this is it. Hey. If they can pin the murder on him while he's in jail, well, then because it's a murder, they're never going to do a plea bargain with him. Thus, he can't turn and they can't use him to testify yeah, against the Sons of Anarchy and see, take him down. Jimma knows that this shit ain't going to go nowhere because there's no evidence to place these guys. Right. The only evidence they have to place him there is Jimma saying, I saw him there. Right. right. That's it. Yep. Which is more than they have now, though. Yeah. It, period. You know, but of course, that's why Jimma doesn't want to talk to him because she don't want to get caught up in all her lies mm, and given that's a, exactly right given a statement and all that but now jack see the king as juicy would say the king wants her to do it yep. and uh so she's kind of stuck now she's got to go do it so of course later didn't she meet with the sheriff and that's when she walks out and, and she she's tells, pissed she tells on um you're no longer wanted on our property get your trailer and go somewhere else right and she's like i don't need a ride home i'll get a taxi why was she pissed at answer though uh, for this whole, the, the storyline behind when he comes to pick her up at the at the um, the diner, and basically starts questioning her, she knows that he's part of the um, the investigation into Tara's uh, murder as well. Right. Because remember she saw, but she was extra pissed paper. at him when she came out of the office, just because of this whole. You think he, so? Because he was telling her, he, Unser told her too. You need to go to the sheriff. Right. And so she, and she doesn't want to do that. So she's just pissed. She thinks that she knows that eventually Unser is probably going to find out what, what happened. Yeah. And so the fact that he's pushing her to do all this. Okay. So she's mad. She wants him away to get her, to get him away. So maybe she thinks that he'll stop doing this investigation, but it's, I mean, it's not going to happen. He's going to. Right. What do you think, Popeye? Anything? I just, I, I'm just dumb because I didn't get it. Why, she, why she was extra mad when she came out of there. Now the sheriff comes out and tells him, "Hey, at least I know who your source is now." Mm-hmm. And maybe that's, I'm, I'm kind of thinking maybe that's why, um, Gemma's so pissed is mm-hmm. because in there she told him, "Hey, that Unser, could be too." Unser has been using you as a source. Yeah, that could be too. You know what I mean? I think that might have come out, but I mm-hmm. guess that's going to come up and uh, as we go. So of course. Here's here's the good stuff we get into here. Marcus Alvarez, of course, president of the May- Mayans, and the crew show up at Diosa while Nero and the girls are cleaning things up. Remember this? Yep. And uh, Nero's wiping down some stuff at the bar, and uh, it gets really heavy here. I'm just working here, Marcus. Yeah, me too, what's I was looking for you this morning. Yeah, where's that? Let you know what went down with Lynn. I know what went down with Lynn. He got busted with two kilos of heroin. Why, Ruskies cops? My son set him up. You know anything about that? I know all about it. So do you. Lynn killed Teller's wife. Gemma saw the Chinese leaving Jax's house that night. Convenient. Your bitch is the only witness, huh? You should tell your junkyard dog he makes another comment like that. I'm going to cut him a new smile. Calmate, calmate. What am I supposed to do now, Nero? Huh? 
Liz sat there and gave me an ultimatum, man. Either I'd bring him Jax, or he was gonna kill me or go after my kid. So it was my problem. I wasn't gonna bring you into that, Marcus. I believe Teller. I'm not saying how we went about it was right, but uh, I had to make a choice, you know? And I did. Amen. I've known you for a long time, Colonel. For this reason's betrayal to my crew, I better handle it accordingly. Hey, you coming with us, huh? You drive them out. Where? To my office. Hey, don't make this harder than it already is, huh? Let's go. All right. I like Alvarez, dude. Yeah. He plays a good part. Mm-hmm. He does a good yeah, job. He does. You know, yeah. he does. President of the Mayans. Mm-hmm. Um, so what happens from here? They take it. They yeah, basically they, take custody. They take Nero take and him, take him to their clubhouse. Lock him in a little room. They want a yeah. meat locker. Yeah, put him in. Is a it was it a meat locker? Pretty much. Okay. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. And They're here's locker. here's where uh, this is where we're going to talk a lot about this here uh, coming up. But this is where old juicy because we saw previously. In a clip, he drove by and saw the Mayans clubhouse right after he robbed the store. Mm-hmm. And they show us a little shot of him seeing the Mayans clubhouse. Mm-hmm. And of course, he made contact. And Alvarez, the 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 Mayans crew, brings Juice in to meet with Alvarez. Here's what, what do you want? My club wants me dead. I need to get to Mexico. Safe passage. Full ID. What makes you think I'd help you? A little under two grand. 2013 Navigator. That ain't shit, man. There's an APB out of you. I'll give you any intel you want on Sam Crow. Yeah. $2,000 in Gemma's Lincoln Navigator. <laughs> stolen. Stolen rig. Let me give you a stolen rig and then uh, yeah. plus two, it's, two grand. Ooh. Plus it's the uh, uh, rig of Jax's mom's who's the president. Right. I mean, you, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. What Let me give you a bunch of trouble. So obviously juice here. And we uh, are going to talk about what happens there. But uh, at this point, don't they throw juice in the closet too? Yep. They throw him in with uh, Nero. With Nero. Mm -hmm. And uh, it gets pretty heavy here because I wasn't expecting those two to end up in the closet together at all, man. Mm -hmm. Um, So Mayans meet with Jackson. Of course, they tell him they have juice. And at this point, I'm knowing at this point that, oh, yeah, they're not going to take juice's bait at all. Nope. They're going to hang him and give him over to Sam Crow. Yep. Of course, Jax and the boys show up at the Mayans clubhouse to confront Juice. And uh, he no, he wasn't in the closet. They kept him out on the couch, didn't they? Yeah, they kept him out on the couch. That's right. Uh, the guys oh, came yeah. in and they're talking about this whole thing. And, they were uh, waiting for the other charter, the other Mayans charter to come in because they had to take it to mm-hmm. the table. That's right. And so he hears the door open. He's like, finally. And then he realizes, oh, yeah. shit. Yeah. It's Jax. What are, what are they doing here? What is this? He goes, what is this? Right. Well, here we go. Then getting picked up. That's just rethinking our alliances. Now we know you've been chopping them down. This is, uh, I'm going to actually start that over because I didn't set it up very well. Uh, so Mayans meet with Jax, tell them they have juice, right? Alvarez and Jax, so uh, sit down, right? After the juice thing. Yep. So then Juice is sitting on the couch and they're just watching him, um, Chibs and all them. And actually, Chibs uh, grabs Juice from his him, throat and throws him down onto the, the couch. Yep. And so Jax and Marcus Alvarez sit down and here's where they make some serious deals. There's a better setup for that. Then getting picked up. That's just rethinking our alliances. Now we know you've been chopping them down. We know why. We knew nothing about him going after your old lady. I believe that. So what happens now, Marcus? I want the gun business. That's Irish business. It's not mine to give. You gave it to Marx. Tell the IRA you changed your mind. With also charter in place, we can offer you everything Black does. If I were to do that, I'd need more than just juice. Yeah, how much more? I need you to give the AB a piece of the prison trade. Takes care of a debt to Tully. Let him distribute in Stockton. The Niners. A breaking away from Pope's death. Tyler's on board to take down Marx. Use Blue Lens heroin turf with Tyler 50 50. That's gonna triple any hit you take from the AB. How do we handle Marx? You take him out, 
together. When that's done, I'll do the dance for the Irish kings. Be the white face on the brown machine. All right. Talk to Tolly. Take it to your table. We'll do the same. If it works out, we got a deal. And a dress. Yeah. And you get your trader back. Oh, yeah. Now, and before he leaves, he says, take that cut off of him. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Jack just looks at him and they beat juice up a little bit and take his cut. Now, what he's talking about there is the little bit of debt. Of course, they're making alliances now. Mm -hmm. They're talking about letting Tolly's crew have a piece of Stockton and don't worry about it because we're Tyler's taking the uh, white supremacists. Right. Leland. Um, And what he's talking about is he he owes debt to Tolly. Remember the, so we, we saw that scene where, um, and those guys are funny, man. The the white Aryan guys. Oh, those guys are just. That's Leland's crew, yeah. which are white trash buck dudes. Tooth, oh, white totally. trash. Did you see that one weird yeah. guy looking? He had like the flat face, and the little leader <laughs> guy is just a little weasel dude. Little. And they get in a, and so they all get in a all brawl. Yeah. Sam Crow and and Leland's crew, the white supremacists, because they're teasing about living in the fifties or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Jax is just giving right. them, giving him shit and all that. And uh, then the little weasel guy comes out with a shotgun. Didn't uh well there there I think what starts it off is they get to call and uh from somebody and the guy says there's a black guy down Oh the there's road. yeah there's, there's yeah there's black guys at the end of the Yeah and so I think that's I, I think if I remember well, correctly that, that's right. what starts the fight. You're right. Cuz then Jack says yeah they're with us they're with and then us. he's talking about your black bring, lover and yeah, whatever and, they, and yeah Right. And Jack says, "Why don't you stop living in the fifties? And, exactly. And then they 1959 fight. Nineteen fifty nine or something like. Then that. Weasel comes out with a shotgun, shoots mm-hmm. it to break everybody up, and then Jack goes right up to him. And he's got it in his neck, and Jack says, "What's the matter, bitch? You afraid to put down the shotgun?" And then right. he, he gets that old <laughs> smile on his face because he just white trashed and he throws it down. Fight on, dude! It was all the crew against crew, man. So that goes down. Of course, that's not how it was supposed to go, and he doesn't want to report that back to Tolly in prison, which is Marilyn Manson, right. the leader of the mm-hmm. Aryans. And so now. Jax has got this, right? He can throw, go back to Tully, which he does later. Mm-hmm. I got it nailed down. You can have part of stock. And the reason, I don't think we explained this. The reason, go ahead. Um, they're in debt to Tully now because Jax promised him two kilos of heroin. Oh, good call. Yep. And so the two kilos of heroin, they got, got taken down got in the raid. Taken down in the raid with uh, Lynn. So uh-huh. now they're out of the heroin. So now the promise that Tully set up with these guys is now. No good. Yep. Good call. Thank you for cleaning that up. And Grim Bastards do a drive-by, of course, on their motorcycles. Mm -hmm. And they're going by that Delaney's house. Now, to bring it for the audience, the Delaney was the guy. He's the leader of the street gang that they've been looking for that that killed one of the Grim Bastards and and put two at others in critical condition this has been going on for like a season part it's like the, finally part of the black game yeah yes. finally i mean I, I don't know why they were holding that out this delaney guy mm-hmm. maybe they had another storyline but there was no reason to hold it this long but finally the grim bastards go by shoot up the house and shoot up the house and the chase is on because they all come running mm-hmm. out amazing none of them were hit out of three thousand bullets going <laughs> into a house <laughs> of them. Yeah. yeah and they the chase is on of course they lead them right into the hands of sam crow and they, of course, the Grim Bastards and Sam Crow kill every last one of Delaney's. Finally, I'm just, so, I'm, I'm no, not going to no, lie, I'm, I'm what's, relieved. What's the name of this episode? Uh, if you got them. Smoke them if you got them. Smoke them yeah. if you right? got them. And it very you well got them there, be. so you might as well smoke them. Yep, yep, very true. Very true. And uh, so finally, we put that little deal to bed. Um, the whole blue Monte Carlo and the street gang killing and all that, I really... Yeah. It's, all it's been a mess, and I don't know why, but uh, anyways, they dropped the dead bodies at Marx's. Did you notice that? They dropped right. all those dead but, bodies re- at Marx's. Remember, remember before that, before they do all of that, mm-hmm. Jax meets with Tolly inside the uh, prison and right. says, hey, we can work this heroin deal out, and Tolly's like, dude, he thinks you're in with the blacks now, so you're going to have to get his, gain his trust. Somehow, oh, yeah, yeah, good you're going to have to gain mm-hmm. his trust. So basically what they do is they like, haul all these dumps guys a van load up, of <laughs> dumps a van load of black guys right. up, and so they go meet with whatever the guy. Leland. The, the, yeah, the white trash, Leland. Uh, white supremacist guy. And he's they so they uh, Jackson then bring some heroin, show it to him. He's like, nah, nah, nah. 
So then they're like, Jax motions them over to the van and opens the van door. And they got a bunch and, of dead black and guys. Here's a bunch of dead black guys. And they're <laughs> like, oh, okay, yeah. yeah, we'll try some of that. So they try it. So I guess they got their trust. Yeah, I think they have their trust. I think right. that did. And then. And then they go dump it in front of uh, Mark's. Mark's is. Uh, a construction site construction of his. Construction site. Yeah. Right. So, and that's when he tells Tolly too, yeah, he's got part of Stockton. So right. you can have part of Stockton. Plus he just got trust back with Leland. So all is good. How about that? All right, so uh, at the very end, Unser talks with Deputy Egley, who was one of the deputies that got shot when Jax and crew went out to meet with Leland, the first time member in the woods, mm -hmm. and they tailed him, and the two deputies got shot. Well, she made it, and apparently she's talking now. This Now, this could turn out to be a major thing, too, because... Yeah. Um, See, I think, she, I think she's going to shut up. I don't think she's going to say that. I don't really? Think what's yeah. I didn't think she'd come out of her coma this soon. I thought they were going to hold her for yeah, a little while. Worry, but the fact that she wants to talk to Unzer brings Unser in to talk to him right i think i think she's worried about repercussions of her talking because sam crow likes her yeah they do they said we like her and that's what chibs told jerry no we like Egley. um but i don't think she knows who shot her right i mean no she, well, she, she doesn't, doesn't she doesn't know who shot no she had her she back knows, turned well she knows sam crow was there but she doesn't know mm -hmm. who she who knows shot her. she knows that somebody i think she knows that it wasn't sam crow that shot her partner or maybe she doesn't I don't think she was she in the passenger she knows somebody seat. else was there. She was in the passenger seat and saw him get shot, and then she gets out and runs, and then she right. got shot in the back. So right. maybe she thinks that Sam Crow is involved in it, and she doesn't want to talk about it like he's saying because she's worried that they will get to her and right. kill her. Good call. Um, you're right. She doesn't know who shot her, and they, mm -hmm. all she knows she is was that running away. There. She was running away. Yeah. Good call. She got shot. So here we go. Jackson Crew are walking away escorting Juice. This is at the very end. Now, I let's talk, and we're going to finish up here. And we also forgot to say, mm -hmm. um, Juice was put into the closet with Nero, right? And they began to oh, have a, yeah, they began call. they began to have a conversation after Jax leaves the uh, warehouse with uh, the Mayans warehouse mm -hmm. to go deal with this stuff that he has to do to get everything right with the Mayans. Uh, they put uh, juice, the Mayans, after they take the cutoff, they put juice into the closet with yes. Nero. So then him and Nero start to have a conversation right. about um, everything that's happened. Right. And here's what, yeah, here's what is very interesting that's going to play out and it's going to play out next episode. We don't really know what all they talked about in there. But see, I honestly, I, I do not think that he told Nero everything that's that's happened i don't think he i don't think he did and my reason is because his reaction when he came out of the room right he comes out and he sees Gemma's car there and he's like what what are you guys that's Gemma's car what are you guys doing you know he's very surprised by that oh nero said that yeah because he comes out and here's yeah. here's Gemma's rig sitting in the warehouse that's because he don't want him to know he knows why would he uh, make that, a deal about that? And here's what well, gets that interesting. Could that could be. Is um, they talk about what's going on. Juice tells him that when he told Nero about Darvini, he betrayed the club because Juice is kind of like, right, right. hey, they want to kill me. And that's why. Remember when I told you about Darvini up in the cabin and mm -hmm. that I, mm -hmm. Jax told me to drug her? You know, they're out. And uh, J Juice actually says at that point, I'm a coward. I deserve to die. He says, yep. Why did yeah. you sit? Because I'm a coward. So Nero gets out of the closet, and of course, he gets let go mm -hmm. because the Mayans are all good with him now because they've made a deal with Jax and all that. Um, and the look they had together there, I almost thought maybe they, but I don't know. I yeah, but maybe. dude, oh, uh, I don't know. Here's the deal. Um, Gemma, uh, Nero goes to Gemma later. Yes. He has a weird look, dude. He, I think Juice told him a lot more. I really do. Could be. I really do. That's what's great about the writing in this, you know, is they'll write stuff like that and then they come out of a closet and we don't get to know mm -hmm, everything right. they said. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole bunch of stuff up in the air now. Well, see, and I had, my wife and I were watching it and I told her after, when I, when I saw him come out, I'm like, he told him, he told him everything. Well, then I saw his reaction to the car being there and I'm like, well, okay, maybe he didn't say anything to him. Well, I don't think he and necessarily his, had to say anything about that he took Jem out and he didn't pull well, the trigger. His, what I think he did could tell him is that 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 Jem is the one that murdered Tara and he was there. You know, he didn't have to tell her everything about. Well, then we went out in the desert. And she no, was going to no, kill me. And, no, no, no. Right. I just didn't think, based off of his reaction and then his initial contact with with Gemma when they go meet. I just, right. I just didn't think that 
based off his reaction, I don't know. I just didn't think that he had told him everything. Okay. Well, there you go. There you go. Um, I guess we'll find out. But he out. obviously thinks that Gemma is now, he, he knows that based off their conversation, the way Gemma's reacting. Right. And based off when Nero, Nero says, well, I was at the warehouse, the Mayans with Juice and Jax. Yep. She, the way her reaction, he knows that he goes, were you helping Juice? Right. Oh yeah. He's on to it now. Nero's starting to think he may not know the full scope, but he's definitely like, right. what's going on? Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. So let's close it out here with some of the outgoing scenes. Here's what's weird. Now I, because I do the notes for this, mm-hmm. I had to watch it like four times and I pause it because they only show like, you know, like a smidgen of a mm-hmm. second. And so I rewind it. So here's what we found. Here's what I found by doing that. Okay. That most of the audience probably doesn't know if you don't do that, if you just watch it real quick. So coming up, oh, mm-hmm. there's a uh, a scene that they show in the closing or, or for the, the next episode, right? Yes. What do they call it? Yeah, the next the, right. preview. Yeah, preview, preview. So they show some Honda police motorcycles. They were just like getting shot up yeah. by Juice and Juice is in his cut. Yeah, yeah. I know. Where do Honda police motorcycles come in? We've never seen those in the show. And why is Juice shooting them up? But that's gonna- I almost thought I had to when I paused that too, as a matter of fact, because I thought it was the Grim Bastards right. bikes at first because it went by so fast. I went, wait a minute. Right. He, now we, Juice is in a cut and he's shooting up the, what is going on? So I went back and paused it. I'm like, wait, no. They're Hondas. That's not their bikes. Yeah. And they're police motorcycles. Mm-hmm. But you're right. Maybe it's Borowski's guys. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know interesting um so you look forward to that guys the honda police motorcycles um happy is asking Gemma to come with us to the cabin quote mm-hmm. and Gemma's concerned you know why do you want me to come to the cabin he goes jack's orders it's club business mm-hmm. so somehow they're gonna end up yeah back at the cabin i i'm really confused when i saw that preview because jack's the the very end where you know on the rock that's painted graffiti and it shows the, the, we're, uh, right we're gonna get to that yes it shows jack's giving him his, his cut. cut right that's one of the ending scenes too i do want to get into that let's go down to um the police we see a scene where the police are chasing juice mm-hmm. in the pursuit mm-hmm. don't know what that's about whether it's right after he shot up the motorcycles but anyways he takes the police on a high-speed pursuit so we're going to get to see that answer is with jack saying i need your word real quick it's i need your word so answer tells jack something big time that he needs his word on. Um, Jax is walking in on Gemma in the dark room with her back turned. Did mm-hmm. you see that? Mm-hmm. And I, I don't know. Just a very quick scene of her yeah, standing there. Yeah, see, and, they're trying to feed it up. I don't. Oh, know of course. I don't know what's going to happen, but that, make you watch that, the next one. Yeah, that's that, right. That to me is just it. I was like, what in the hell? Yep, Papa, you got anything on this? Dude? You've been pretty nothing. quiet over there. You started out real involved, and <laughs> um, so Jax is with Unter saying nothing is going to happen to her. Yes. Who? to Gemma. Well, I'm we thinking, don't know. I'm thinking Gemma. That's maybe. what I think too. Who else would it be? Right. Right. I think he finds out here very soon. Cause it ain't going to be, uh, uh, windy. I mean, what? Right. It's, it's gotta be. Yep. Something is going to, they're going to find out real soon. So Gemma's with winning say, uh, saying quote, who knows what juice has told him. So that's what Gemma says to Wendy. Who knows what juice has told him. Mm-hmm. Dude. So uh, it's going to get crazy. Now Jack's with juice along this is what you're talking about, mm-hmm. which I wanted to finish up on. Mm-hmm. Jax is with Juice along a roadway in front of a rock, big, huge rock, and they're on the shoulder, and they're facing each other. Did you notice that, or did you see that on my notes no, about no, what no. was painted on that no, rock? I did, did you see, see that? Was, I did see. I didn't notice. Yeah. yeah. It was painted on the rock. Yep. What, J- tell, JT, tell them what it is. It says JT, and it had, it had a, uh, a year. 11, 13 of 93. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming that's when he died. Jax Teller. Or, right, or, or, there, right there at the not, scene. Wait, where he, no, wait. That was uh, be John Teller. John, sorry, John Teller. John Teller. Yeah, where he died. Yeah, the yep. area where he died. On that the might side of be the road. The blade of the collision on the right. side of the road. Good call. Mm-hmm. Good call. I didn't think of it that. Uh, I was just thinking that somebody. Uh, maybe and that could be that. And and that could be a segue into. Gemma did this to my dad. Mm-hmm. And now she did this to my wife. Yep. And so now her, and, I, him and Juice are meeting, and he's giving Juice the cut back. And, and Juice, Juice says, and Juice "I'm says, sorry." I'm sorry. And he's and he, they look. Well, he doesn't actually give. We see the scene where he reaches out. He reaches hand him out the to cut. hand him the cut. I don't think he's going to hand him his cut. I think maybe, he's going to no. kill him. I he think he's just cut back. No. So here's where we're at. Here's the predictions, real quick. 
here's the biggest things and bring up anything else you have too. But my okay. biggest things are, did juice tell Nero everything in the closet and does juice get his cut back? And, and the only reason I would say he would get his cut back temporarily is because Jax wants to use him for a whole bunch of yes. chaos yes. and then kill him, make him yes. think he's part of the club, make yes. him do all kinds of dirty work That's exactly until he gets is. his ass arrested and is in prison or something That's the rest exact, of his life. That's Just exactly use him like a little bitch. They're not going to want to do that because if he does that, then they get Rico coming back on him. Because if he has his cut on, well, yeah. he does all the stuff, he gets into trouble. True. That's my thing. I thought about that. Is is he going to want him yeah, having some type of a, a, an affiliation you know, with the club to... I was actually thinking that maybe the Mayans were going to have him do something with his cut on to bring a bunch of heat oh, on to see? Sam Crow. You've been too quiet over there. But they already, <laughs> yeah, but they but, already took cuss. They already well, got right, him. Right, I understand. So. That's what I was thinking originally, though, is that they're going to use him because, you know, the mm-hmm, guys are right, things ahead. Right. But I don't think so. And I don't think that Chib or that uh, um, um, Juice is going to get his cut back at all. I say, then it just brings heat on the club. You're they right. Have him go out and do stupid but, stuff. It's just going to bring heat on. Then you got to worry about Rico so, or everything else. But True. What, what about point. what about the uh, the previews they shot, showed with him in his cut driving by shooting up motorcycles? Right. I, I have. Yeah, I know. I, I, I'm I was confused. watching that too. Going, what I'm the really hell is confused that about? now. I'm like, I don't know. So my prediction, I'm just because I always throw it out there because I really, if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. Yeah. But my prediction is that they do give Juice's cut back, but only to use him for a little while. And I also, my prediction is on the second point, talking point, is that Juice did tell Nero that Gemma killed Tara. What say you give your two predictions real quick? Who pulled his cut though? Hmm? Who pulled his cut? What do you mean? Who pulled uh, Who pulled the cut from Juice? The Mayans did. Exactly. So they've got hold of the cut right now. Well, they gave it to Jax apparently. Did they? Well, I don't know because he's handing him a cut. Okay. Well, maybe at some point, but I'm just saying is you're talking about the motorcycle riding and stuff like that. Maybe I'm they, wondering if the Mayans even went back and set something up and, you know, hey, we want you to do this, you know, Aha. Uh-huh. and they're, yes. got, they're making him wear a cut to make it look yep. bad on Sam Crow. Yep. Oh boy, you lost and then me there. maybe free okay. passage to Mexico so, or something like so that. So the knows? Mayans took his cut. Uh-huh. Okay. They have the cut. Mike, straight in it. Sorry. There you go. The Mayans have, it's a ha- cock, have, right to <laughs> The Mayans, the Mayans have Juice's cut, right? Mm-hmm. We didn't ever see Jax get that cut back when they took Juice, right, correct? right. So maybe they're holding that. Well, then that wouldn't make sense, though, because how would Juice get loose from? Well, that'd be the only them? thing. Is well, yeah, at the end of this, how did Jax get it? But yeah, yeah. At the end know. of this episode, the Sam Crow it shows Jax and the crew escorting Juice out of there, right? right? So right. maybe they gave him the cut. I don't know. Mm-hmm. So just two points: Does Juice get his cut back? And what did Juice, did Juice tell Nero that she murdered Tara? I'm thinking Juice does get his cut back. Okay. I think they're going to use him. Okay. And then. To do something. But I honestly, I don't think that Juice told Nero. Okay. That Gemma killed Tara. I don't All think right. he told, I don't think he said that. There you go. Your turn. I think. So Juice. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I think that he told um, Nero that Gemma's helping him try to get away because the, the club is trying to kill him. Right. But you think that he did not tell her about the murder? No. Okay. I don't think Juice gets his cut back in any type of official capacity. Well, I don't either. They're not going to hand it to him. I don't even know if the club would give him his cut back. Is he getting his cut back or not? No. Okay, so he's absolutely not giving him his cut. Not even to use him. Obviously, he has his cut on because we see him in, in, in the previews that he has it on. But I don't think he's getting it back from Sam Crow in any type of official capacity. Right. So no, we're is all in gonna, agreement. Does he get back in the club? No. Right. Uh, what did he tell uh, Nero in the closet? He didn't tell him that he killed Tara. Okay. Or Good. that Gemma did. I so we're all in agreement that he gets his cut back, but obviously just to be no. used. No, no, he said it. he's, he's getting, getting his, his cut, cut back. back. He ain't getting his cut back. And no, he's not even in an unofficial capacity. He's oh, just, first, obviously he has to okay. at some point. He's, right. he's going to have it on. He's, so the question, he, he's going to be, he's gonna be given that cut. Simple back. question. Right. Not Sim- that he's in the club, but he's given that club. Back. Okay. So we're all in agreement that he gets his cut back, but not as a part of the club, just so they right. can use him for whatever. Right. Okay. And then, we're not in agreement on, I think he told Tara and you two say that he didn't tell him about the murder. He didn't, he didn't tell, tell awesome. Gemma. He didn't tell her. Awesome. Good stuff, guys. So, of course, we'll keep going uh, with the the uh, Sons of Anarchy all the way through. We do two episodes, um, actually one post- podcast episode for every two actual television mm-hmm. episodes. So, yep. we uh, hopefully we'll crank this one out right away. And, of course, don't forget, we do our regular weekly podcasts. Um, we still got those guys coming at you that we do year round. 
call to action. Don't forget about our Patreon page, guys. If you want to help us out, head over to lawabidingbiker.com slash Patreon for less than a price of a coffee a month. That's right. You can help us put some fuel in the lab gas tank and keep this thing on going down the road. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Don't forget, get involved, guys. Um, seven, uh, 509-731-3548 is our listener hotline. You can leave a voicemail. Let us know your thoughts and what you think is going to happen and tell us we're full of crap. Um, <laughs> yeah, because we are full of crap, but we have fun with it. You can also leave an internet voicemail for us right from your computer anywhere in the world, lawabidingbiker.com slash voicemail. Don't forget to get in that email club, guys, I sent out when we put out new free videos and stuff. That's lawabidingbiker.com slash email club. And of course, if you don't have any uh, shekels to throw our way right now, you can really help us out by simply rating this podcast in iTunes or Stitcher Radio. You can do that at lawabidingbiker.com slash iTunes or slash Stitcher Radio. Stitcher Radio is for you Android guys and gals out there. Um, it's a good app to uh, a good pod catcher is what they call it. Anyways, keep the rubber side down. Shiny side up. Peace out, guys. Thanks Bam. for tuning in. <laughs>